Hi everyone, my name is Courtney. I write under the pen names Lyra Parrish and I'm one half of the USA Today best-selling duo Kennedy Fox. And guys, it's so nice to see you. How have you been? It's been a little while since I've done a, a real video, I guess you could say feeling just a little rusty, but based on the title of this video, you know that it has to do with packaging and essentially branding different series and books. But before we hop into that, I wanted to let you know that today the anthology auction kicks off. It will only be available for four days, guys. And this auction has so many good things that even I want to bid on some of them. There are authors who have offered their time as far as coaching, blurb help, outline help. I saw somewhere where Zoe York was offering to help create you a new TikTok account and get it in the correct algorithm and just there's so many really cool things in this auction. So um, if you would like to bid on any of those items, as I said, it will only be available for four days and then it closes. I will put the link down below in the description. Brooke, my writing partner, Brooke Cumberland, she is offering an alpha read on a romance book. I cannot tell you how valuable it is to have someone who reads romance, like Brooke reads a lot of romance. She also has been writing for a very long time and she's my writing partner. And I can tell you that over the years of working with Brooke, she has made me a better writer. So if you are a romance author and you're watching this and you're like, I have this book done, but I feel like there's something missing. I really wish I had an amazing alpha or beta reader. Brooke is offering to do that. I believe it's a book up to 80,000 words, but look at the description. She's gonna mark it up and basically you are going to get the treatment that I get when we write together. And I am also offering one hour of coaching. You guys know that I do not coach. It's just something that I do not do. People email me all the time and ask and I'm like, so sorry, I have an, an across the board no that I tell everyone. I was asked if I would donate a coaching hour and I said yes. So if you would like to be coached by yours truly for one hour, please bet on that auction. Everything's starting off at $10. I don't know how much it's going to end up at. You might get me for 20 bucks. I have no idea. So the way that it's gonna work is I will schedule with whoever wins. We will chat for one hour. We can either break it up into two 30 minute sessions or we can go for an entire hour. I'm down for anything. We can talk about co-writing. We can talk about release day schedules. We can talk about social media or YouTube or literally anything that you guys wanna talk about that I have knowledge on. I will be happy to unload my brain for you for one hour. So if you're interested in that, I will put the links to me and Brooks auctions down below. Also the main auction link. It's time to get started on packaging. You guys know that I make these cover critique videos. They do take me quite a long time to do because I want to make sure that I'm doing my due diligence when I'm giving advice about covers and researching different genres, all those things. As I've been branching out of my genre and kind of researching the different genres outside of romance, I had this epiphany late at night. And with that, <laughs> I decided to go and neurotically pull all of our sales reports. Guys, like I said, ADHD can sometimes be a toxic trait and at other times it can be your superpower because I hyper-focused on this for hours. And I went through and I looked at all of our series and I looked at the sell-through rate and I looked at the total amount of money that each series had made based on when they were released. Of course, a series that is older will have made more money over time just because that's how it works, hopefully. And I saw this red flag in our reports and I was like, oh my God, like, I knew that we had one series that just didn't ever catch in the way that me and Brooke expected it to. It is a small town romance. We are known for our small town romances. Um, it's got a suspense element along with it. And it's a duet series about a friend group. And this series has haunted us for a little while. <laughs> because we have changed covers and we have changed the series name 
once already because we knew that there was something not quite right on it. Fast forward, we had already changed series name, we had already changed covers, and I looked at the numbers and they, they still were not adding up. And so the next day I text Brooke and I'm like, listen, this is what I did last night. Probably shouldn't have, but I think that we missed the mark on our packaging for the entire series. I went on Amazon, I went on Apple, I went on Kobo, I went on Barnes & Noble. Exactly the same process that I use when I go through your covers. I went through, I took like little screenshots of books that are in our subgenre, because that's kind of important here. Just really studied the subgenre. Like romance, yes, there's like the big umbrella, but there's a bunch of like subgenres inside of romance, and sometimes you can package correctly for romance, but incorrectly for your subgenre. And I was convinced that was the problem with the series. <sighs> and so Brooke's like, oh my God, I think you're right. And so she starts <laughs> going through Amazon and Apple. And so we both looked at small town romance with suspense elements, and we compared our cover to that subgenre. And let me tell you, we completely missed the mark. We decided, that instead of making this a duet series, how we originally released it, that we were going to package the books together and that we needed to completely get rid of the series name that we currently had. We needed to trash the titles that we had and we needed to rewrite blurbs where it was short, quick, to the point with a hook, a good hook not too long where it's like four paragraphs that's too long for a blurb nobody has time for that we started working on it we stayed up until probably like 5 or 6 a.m searching for images to put on these covers we knew that we needed three because it was a six book series and we're bringing it down to three an interconnected standalone series which we have those and they sell really well we have duets they sell well too but when you look at the subgenre of small town romance with suspense elements, there are not really many duets or duologies, as some of the TikTokers call it, in that subgenre. So, number one, we made something into a six book series when it probably should have been a three book series. We first started off with the ex con duets. Let me tell you, you think people would want ex-cons? No, they didn't want that. So then we changed the series name to the Lawton Ridge Duet Series, which is the town where it happens to make it more small town romance. That really didn't move the mark either. So over the last two months or so, Brooke and I have been working on repackaging this series. There is a moral to this story, and I believe it is, regardless of how many books you release, how successful you are, how how long you've been in an industry, sometimes you can still miss the mark. We did, we missed it, it happened. We tried to fix it last year, didn't really work out for us. And so I knew that there was still a problem because the amount of money that the series has made is severely behind the rest of our series. The numbers don't lie, that's what I'm gonna tell you right now. As a self-published author, as someone who is the CEO of their own publishing business, you have the ability to make changes at any point in your series. I prefer to do it after the newness has worn off so then you can get another boost. I also like to allow our readers to finish series sets. So if we start with a specific cover, it's really important to Brooke and I that that reader even if it's like five people, have the ability to finish their set. So with this series, I think we changed the covers before the last two books were released and we offered the original covers and the new updated covers. And so we made sure that our readers were happy because we never wanna do something where someone feels as if they need to go and buy six more books. We, we don't want that. We want people to be able to finish their sets with the covers that we originally started with. Not all authors do that. I've seen trad pub just switch covers in the middle of a series, which really ticks me off. It's important that we don't do that. Anyway, the numbers don't lie. And sometimes regardless of the knowledge that you have, you can still miss the mark. It's so important to do market research regardless 
of how long you've been around. There are some authors who can publish anything. Okay, they have such a large reach that the cover doesn't even really matter for them because at the end of the day, their name is what's selling the book. It doesn't matter what the title is. It doesn't matter what the insides are. If they are a household name, if their name's on, on it, it will sell. Kennedy Fox is not at that level. We are mid-listers. We don't make USA Today every single release. We do well and I am very happy and grateful with where we are in our career, but we still have to pay attention to our packaging of our books. We are not at that point where we can just put whatever out there. And honestly, me and Brooke are way too picky, so I don't think that we would ever get to the point where we're like, yeah, just slap whatever on it. Like, we just don't work like that. We decided that we would completely repackage. The covers that we have now, I will put up on the screen. I'll put up the first cover and then the second cover, and now I will show you guys what the covers actually look like now. We've been extremely honest with our readers. We have said, hey, if you've already got the series, you don't need to rebuy it because there is nothing on the inside of it that has changed. We even put a note in the bottom of the blurb that says that this book was previously titled as this. We've been extremely honest. It's not like a, oh, let's try to get more sales from our readers. It's more of a way for us to reach the people that we did not reach the first time. And when you change covers and you change titles and you change series names, you are actually reaching a different audience than those who purchased it in its original state. It's hard for me to do a comparison as far as how well it did in sales compared to the first time we released it because we pushed it very, very hard. This was more of like a re-release. We didn't like pound the pavement with, hey, y'all need to get this book. But we did send out review copies to those who weren't really interested in the series before and did not read it. We have had people on TikTok find it and make videos about it. And it's done very well considering it's a re-release. I did not expect for it to sell the way that it has sold because this series has been around for a little while. I believe we started writing it in 20... I could have my dates all wrong. I don't know. I, di I didn't look. But it's, it's older. We republished it. We have all new ISBNs. We have all new paperbacks and titles and the story is still the same and people who refused to give it a chance beforehand have now started reading it. Those readers who love small town romance with suspense elements have started downloading it. It's all because our packaging is now right. It was off. <laughs> it was totally off. We thought we nailed it, but we didn't. And time and looking at your payouts for a series, like get a spreadsheet, go and write down the total that each of these series have made based on the release date and look at it because the numbers will not lie. We might not have ever realized this if I didn't crazily go out there and pull the numbers for our series. And that's why I say that the numbers are important. Every author out there has a baseline. Some people's baseline is very high. Other people's baseline is a little bit lower. And it's dependent on where you are with your career, how many books you have in your backlist, how consistent you are with publishing. But there is a baseline number that authors pretty much know that they're going to make every single month. And sometimes you're way above your baseline and that's a really good month. And sometimes you're below your baseline. But on average, there is a number that most authors have that they know that they're gonna make. I can look at our series that have been around for quite a long time and I can be like, okay, this actually checks out. These books have made X amount of dollars. It's pretty consistent after a certain amount of time. And so for me, maybe because I was an accountant for a decade of my life, I like to look at the sales. I like to look at where a series kind of drops off where it's like, you know what, maybe we shouldn't have done those other two books because they just didn't sell as well as the first four. Or, you know, we 
could have potentially added more books to this series here because it was selling so well and it ended on a very high note. People like that. They want to keep going. They're not done with the characters of the world yet. And the numbers will always tell you the truth. And this story is something that I had to share with you guys about packaging. And people like me and Brooke sometimes get it wrong. But you know when you get it right because of the read-through rate of the series, because of the reviews that you're getting on a book that is considered backlist because it's been out for a while. We are reaching people that we didn't reach before and that's what you want as a self-published author. You always wanna be finding new readers and cultivating that audience and having them fall in love with the series and then being like, oh, well, this is their small town romance. What other small town romance do they have? And that change in that series so far has made a significant difference. And not all the books have released yet. I think only one has released. The second one is coming, I believe, next week. And then the third one is coming. And so the way that we did our release schedule was we released each book two weeks apart from each other. They were already written, guys. It's not like, it's not like we wrote all these books and we're just rapid releasing them. This is just a re-release and using the rapid release method to get people to pre-order, to continue on with the series. Well, we could have just dropped them all out there at once and been like, okay, it's done. We actually put some thought behind it, you know, run a little bit of ads, put it in our newsletter, put it in our Facebook group, look for advanced review readers, those who didn't want to give the series a chance beforehand. And all of those things seem to have worked. I guess what I'm trying to say is packaging is super important. And I know that you guys know that, and I have harped on that for years. But packaging isn't the only element that sells books. You have to have the trifecta, as I like to call it. You have to have a great cover, you have to have a good blurb that has a hook that makes people want to keep reading, and then you also have to have a good book. Because you can get two of those things right and still miss the mark. You can have an amazing package, and then when people open it up and read it and it's crap, they may not come back to you ever again. So that's why it's important to have all three of those things. We knew the book was good. <laughs> I kept telling Brooke, why aren't people reading this? It's such a good story. Second chance romance. You know, I'm a sucker for second chance. A friend group, a small town, suspense elements, the whodunit. Like it's a great story, but people would not pick it up. BookBub has denied us like 20 times on the first book in the series. And I'm like, why? Why do they keep denying this? We changed the freaking series name. We changed the covers and I was like, okay, they're not gonna deny us now, like we're on point. And I will be very excited to see that once we have our reviews up and this has been out for a little while, submitting it to BookBub and seeing if we actually get one. And if we do, that'll just be another checkbox next to my little list of things for that specific series that didn't happen. It's never too late. I just wanna stress that it's never too late to change covers, to change titles, to change series. I mean, we've even changed author names on books because there was that series that flunked that me and Brooke <laughs> missed the mark on that I talk about quite often. But after we recovered it and stuff, people started to give it a chance and we have new readers because of that. And so it's never too late. If you have a series where you're just like, you know what, Courtney, the series just does not sell and I don't understand why, look at it from an outsider's per perspective. Don't look at it as in, oh my God, I just love this cover. Nobody cares if you love the cover. And even if you put a cover on your book that you don't love, the point is for your readers and for your audience to love it. I don't care if your friends love it. Are your friends your audience? Are they your mass audience? Probably not. I don't like the whole, let me ask my readers and let them choose. They're already purchasing your books. You've already got them hooked. You have to step out of that mindset of needing approval from everyone around you, including your current readers, including your friends, including blah, 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 and go and look at the numbers and go and do your research on your genre and your subgenre. It does make a difference if you're in Kindle Unlimited or if you are on all platforms. And I've got videos, I think there's how many? Two, three? Ugh, there's some videos out there where I do cover critiques. I would just like to encourage you to go and watch those and think about how you can use that 
to your advantage for your genre, whatever genre it is, it's exactly the same research. I will be doing more cover critiques, so do not give up on that. I have probably like 20 25 or 30 emails just waiting for me. They take me a lot of time to do and so I try to make sure that I'm not rushing and that I can give back in the proper way. So when I get time to do them, I sit down and do them. It does take me a long time, but I enjoy being able to share that with you guys. It can change your career if you have the right packaging for your book. That's to also say that you could have the right packaging. Our Checkmate packaging was chef's kiss. It was so good, but we've changed it since then because the standard changes. Every three-ish, four-ish years, you should be looking at your backlist and, and kind of seeing, does it still fit or could this be updated to current days? And if you feel like it could be updated because what you have is severely outdated, save money to update it because the money that you put into it, you could potentially make that back and see a second spike in that series. And what I like to do, just a few little tips before I end this video, is make a big deal about it. Like, is it an anniversary? Is it the three-year anniversary of the series releasing? Is it the five-year anniversary of the series releasing? Like, make a party out of it. You know, celebrating the fifth-year anniversary of this series releasing, it's getting a facelift and it's getting all new covers, guys. I'm so excited to show you the new covers for a series that you love and absolutely adore. And you have a big cover reveal and you get people involved and those people who are just now starting to read in the genre or have just kind of like skipped past your books for whatever reason, you could potentially grab their attention. And then someone makes a video on TikTok and you go viral and a book from 2015 is now ranked top 100 on Amazon. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in 2022. And this should excite you. This should make you so excited because you have the power to change that. Tried pub authors, they have an outdated cover. They have to live with that until they get their rights reverted back or until the publisher's like, ah, we'll give it a new cover. But for the most part, I've seen tried pub books have the same cover for years until they get a movie and change them. That's one of the great things about self-publishing. We have the power to make change, to find new readers. That's one of the really cool things about self-publishing. That's just my little story about packaging. That's two out of our how many series that we kind of missed the mark. And I'm excited to keep you updated on how it actually goes. So I might actually pull numbers in six months and pull the first two books, see how much money they made in a six month period, and then pull the first book of our new series, the repackaged one, and see how much money it makes and see if it's comparable. I am super excited about comparing the numbers. It's that accountant part of my brain. I hope that you're doing well. I've got some pretty cool news coming up soon. I will be having writing sprints probably for the next two weeks, so stay tuned to the community tabs. If you are not subscribed, what are you doing? Just press the button. Just do it. Hit the subscribe button, press the bell, do all those things the real YouTubers tell you to do. Almost at 10,000. I'm so excited. Like 25 more subscribers and we're there. Don't forget about the auction. You could have one hour with yours truly. You could also have Brooke critique alpha beta read your book as well. Links are down below in the description. And you know what? There might be some other videos on my channel that interest you. They will be right here. And that's, that's all I have guys. I hope you have an amazing, incredible week. You accomplish all your goals and you write all the words and I'll see you again in my next video. Bye guys.